I first learned of Oksana Ross when I was taking a pottery class some years ago. The pottery instructors were discussing the best art teachers in the state of Colorado, and they both concluded Oksana Ross was at the top of the list. After making my first attempt at script writing, I realized my drawing skills needed a lot of improvement to create a storyboard. I began researching drawing classes in the Denver Boulder area. Colorado Free University offered a Learn to Draw Basic Mixed Media class taught by Oksana Ross. So I always look forward to our Wednesday meetings. Did you have a good week? Yes. yes. Right. And today is a very special day. So I thought I'd bring this to share with you today. Oh, how sweet. Oh, thank you. Pretty. Yeah. pretty. Oh. And you can, we can pass this around. Oh, boy. And Patty's one of my favorite students. And I'm so fortunate I meet the most interesting people through my classes because I have been teaching all my life, <laughs> both art and music. And I uh, believe and I emphasize the interrelationship of the arts. It's very important. So I show my slides and accompany them with music of that time. I grew up with Mozart in Prague, his favorite city, where his magic flute as well as the Don Giovanni was first performed. So as a child, I remember going with my parents to the opera house. Uh, it's called Narodni Divadlo. My father would sit at the piano and say, you know, I'm transposing this from the sopranos to the tenors. What do you think? And so I was very much involved with music. And then in order to make a little more money, we all needed some money to go to all the concerts and opera and so forth, I would give piano lessons for $3 for a piano lesson. Later on, when I was at the High School of Music and Art, I continued with my lessons. And I, would, I was preparing, my teacher decided, for Juilliard. And that meant uh, preparing a repertoire, uh, which of course consisted mostly of classical music, right from Bach and on to uh, uh, Beethoven, and I performed my Appassionata Sonata. The drawing class consisted of a dozen people with a diversity in backgrounds as well as artistic ability. The first lessons were discovering shapes, the contrast of shading and light, and perspective. It took several classes before I realized how the various techniques are used to enhance my drawing. The entire class was amazed at how quickly their drawings improved and took life. We now look at the world in a much different perspective. During our instruction, Oksana would share her many stories with us. She would also delve into art history, describing the technique of various art periods and how the music, politics, and culture all intertwined. Oksana is an icon in the art world. She often has a rather brash and bold edge to her demeanor surrounded by total pure passion and the burning desire to teach others to love and appreciate art as she does. And um, at one time while I was at Columbia there was a, a big party given uh, for Latin American students as well as others too and I was invited. So I began to play but it was a very informal party. It was in a huge hall and people were and I was just in the corner and playing 
But a man was leaning on the piano, listening to me, and I thought I wish he'd go away because <laughs> I'm, I'm performing here for playing. I'm hoping I can go through all the three movements without referring to my notes. When I finished, she said, this is quite extraordinary. You are a very musical young woman. I said, well, thank you very much, and so on. In the meantime, the hostess came around, and she said, why didn't you talk to him some more? I said, well, who's he? She said, that's Claudio Rao. I said, well, Claudio Rao, whom I met in Brazil, yes. That's right, he is. Oh, I didn't realize that. And happened to meet an artist that the world, the whole world knows of him now, but at that time was not that well known. He came from Ukraine, and his name is Alexander Archipenko. And most people mispronounce his name, and they say Archipenko. Right here in Denver, Walking Woman, 1812, typical of the period of Cubism. Now, this is almost at the same time as Picasso was there. Archipenko, who created this Walking Woman, Cubism, with concave and convex style of his figure that can be turned around. And it's, she's very graceful, as you can see. In the summer, he taught in Woodstock, New York, which was an art colony. So I went there for a while. What I'm trying to make is the point that I lived in the 60s. That was the height of what was called the New York School. Later on, all over the United States, because I received my PhD, and the role of our keeping going 20th century art. Well, good morning. It is good to see you here. We have a crowd of people here. This is a room that represents Cubism as well as Impressionism. We are already looking at some of the paintings of that period. And as we look at Legere, and as we look at Greece, and then as we look at Picasso and Brock and others, we know we are in that era that made Paris famous, it was the Mecca. Now there are various isms. There's Impressionism of Pissarro, who was kind of the leader, he was an older um, painter. And he and Cezanne were very good friends, but Cezanne's paintings belong to the post-Impressionists. And there are three famous post-Impressionists. And there are Cezanne, Van Gogh, and Gauguin, who worked mostly in Tahiti, in the islands. So this is an unusual early work of Pissarro. Notice that he hardly uses any black. When he wants a dark color, he uses dark green, dark blue. And artists who paint like to use uh, um, French blue or, or uh, an alizarin crimson together with, uh, without using black. So the reason that this is important, because when Archipenko was a young man in Ukraine, he studied uh, the art of the Renaissance masters, early Renaissance and right up to the high Renaissance, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael. So I wrote about that period. And then he wanted, this is what he looked like as a young man, then he wanted to look, and his dates are 1887, and he died in 1964. And I met him in the 60s, actually a little before. And so this is when he was a young man. She's extremely disciplined. She does not accept a student's attitude. I can't do that. She would immediately respond emphatically, do it, do it now. Oksana always respects and admires everyone's attempt to draw, whether their work was quality or very primitive. She always sees the good in everything and has a constructive way of showing how to improve your work. After sharing her love of art for decades, teaching will always be her life's mission and her passion. I'm a cultural person. I love the music of Tchaikovsky. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without the Nutcracker, right? And so many great songs came from Ukraine. And so my mother would say, now listen to this, because they call it Carol of the Bells. It has nothing to do with the bells. It's about a little bird who comes to bring good luck 
if you put some crumbs on the silk, so she will come to wish you God. And she would sing the song. <clears throat> Щедрик, ведрик, щедрий вочка, прилетіла ластівочка, стала собі щепетати, господаря викликати, and so on and on and on. And that's why I still keep my Ukrainian name, Oksana, which is derived, and I found that out only recently from someone who knows um, ancient history, that it's derived from Ksenia, X-E-N-I-A who was the wife of Alexander the Great. And we have a street here in Aurora named Ksenia, <laughs> so it's not such a... So on my christening papers when I was born, it's not Oksana, it's Ksenia. But then popular name became Oksana. <laughs> and my life became easier ever since Oksana Bayul, the ice skater, the famous ice skater, got a gold medal, I think it was, for the best ice skating a beautiful young 16-year-old girl from Odessa. So ever since she got her medal, my life is easier. And my students keep me going in a way. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to each class. They're always ready, sitting down with their pen or pencil in their hand. And I say, good evening, and they write it down. <laughs> Everything, they're just... A wonderful response. I'm very fortunate. But Michelangelo also said to his nephew, nephew wanted to be an artist, his nephew said, go home and draw, 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 draw. You can do it, never do enough. I tell them they go to a restaurant, let's say for lunch, and before her sandwich comes or whatever, <laughs> she has to wait for the order, she's supposed to sketch people. And that's what artists have been doing for centuries. They're constantly sketching. Leonardo's drawings are not finished. But uh, they're superb. My friend and I were walking around looking at all the different artists and then it was time to have lunch. So we walked into an ordinary little lunch place, just a small place. Uh, we sat around and my friend sat right next to de Kooning. And we recognized him. And um, we were talking to him. She was talking more and she said, why do you paint angry women? And he said, and he, I remember he bit into his hamburger and the juice was coming down his chin. <laughs> As we were talking to him, he said, because I'm angry at the world. The world is going crazy. It's getting more and more complex. And my girlfriend spoke to him more than I did. And uh, he said, um, well, this cannot go on. It's just, um, we are the artists, we are, foreseeing what is going to happen in our generation, your generation. He looked at me and he said, and well, I paint an angry woman, but not like you. And he painted to me as if to say, you're better looking than some my <laughs> angry woman. And that was 20 years ago, so. Her inspiration will always be a part of my life as it has instilled in me a meditative and therapeutic outlook as well as inspired me to work on improving my art skills through discipline and practice. Thank you, Mrs. Ross, for sharing and instilling a piece of your passion in me. based on only three chords. This is when I'm seven years old. I remember this for a song. <laughs> 